Uh, time for something a little bit different. We are turning to surfing. Garod McDaid is a professional surfer from Sligo. He finished second in the shortboard grand final at the European Championships in Portugal. Eurosurf uh, 2023 uh, this week. Delighted to say joins us on the line. Good morning, Garod, and congrats. Mm-hmm. Morning. Thank you. <laughs> How are you all doing? <laughs> How are you doing? Uh, more, more to the point. Yeah, good. Super happy. Uh, still here in Portugal, waking up after the finals day yesterday. Pretty tired and sore, but yeah, super happy. Do you get a chance to get out and celebrate that last night, or what's the scene? Uh, we tried my best to go out and celebrate, and uh, had a couple of beers, but that was about the max. But I was so dead from. Uh, a full day of contests of heat yesterday so I was in bed by half nine so the ce- the celebrations were finished early How long are you in the water on a day like that? Uh, so yesterday the heats were like 30 minute long so I had two heats so I had two 30 minute heats um, it doesn't sound like a lot but it's pretty high intensity so you're pretty you're pretty fried after every heat uh, you, did you, you mentioned sort of about the body taking a bit of a battering what how is, how does that come about because like from the outside looking in the and I'm certainly not claiming to be any expert in the area but the bits and pieces I've seen like it all looks so slick and designed and carefree and all that sort of stuff so will you take us inside the waves a little bit and what, how does that battering take place oh it's uh, well you're getting battered every time you're paddling out even you have to get through the waves that's the first the first hurdle you have to get past and then you're surfing on the waves it's it's pretty physically demanding it, it probably might not look like it but it's super hard and uh yeah then when you fall you're getting some hold downs and stuff and yeah it's it's hard but it's good crack <laughs> And how did it all begin for you, Jared? You might grow. You might take us back to how it all started. So yeah, I started surfing probably when I was ten properly. But my dad got me into it. Uh, like every summer, we'd go out once or twice uh, to Strand Hill, and he'd be pushing me in from when I was like probably five or six, I'd say, once or twice every summer. And then, kind of from when I was ten years old onwards, I just kind of fully clicked into it and pretty much quit every other sport and I knew that this was the one thing I wanted to do all the time so uh, yeah it it took up uh, most of my time and that's kind of how it's been going ever since Uh, pretty much only thing I do now and you're a pro surfer like how many pro surfers are there in Ireland Uh, uh, there's one or two other guys that are pro surfers in Ireland I suppose like um, there's guys like Conor Maguire who's a big wave surfer who's uh, made a career out of it as well so yeah it's uh, it's good to have some other guys like that that uh, we surf with all the time and yeah pushes you in pushes you in all the different types of conditions we'd be very familiar with talking to like golfers uh, you know who get into it and it's like uh, it's that same nature of sort of you're going from venue to venue week on week and trying to scrape together whatever um, money you can and winnings and sponsorships and all that sort of stuff what is that like growth for you is it a comfortable living is it a scrape by or yeah how do you manage that yeah so it is it's pretty much the same as that it's scraping every sense you can get together to get to some contests to chase waves around the world you're just uh, you're trying to just scrape as much as you can together to, to make a living out of it and I've been lucky I have good sponsors at the moment and uh, it's it's keeping me going for now and uh, keeping me off the workforce. So, uh, yeah, I'm, pretty, I'm super happy and super lucky that I'm able to do it. Is there, a, what's, the, what's the, you don't need to go into specifics if you don't want, but what's the payday like after a day like yesterday? Oh, well, to be honest, there's no payday after a day like yesterday. It's just the European Championships, so okay. there's, there's no prize money in that. It's just the European title and, it's yeah there's no a lot of the contests they're like more the pro contest there would be money in and stuff but uh yeah for this one you're just it's the glory doing it for the glory of uh european championships and uh yeah happy that i came second would love to have the glory of first but it's all good (laughs) take the opportunity there to give your sponsors a shout out who you who you working with uh so yeah i got like rip curl uh monster energy uh bradley surfboards uh get support from Sport NI and uh, Irish Surf Association they all support me my whole family support me so yeah it's great I can't can't beat it yeah it must be incredible to be able to represent your country as well in a you know a, a sport that maybe isn't as well known here at home yeah that's it it's kind of right now surfing is getting more and more into the mainstream light so 
it's in the Olympics now and all that. So hopefully it gets more and more uh, mainstream recognition and it grows the sport greatly and uh, can have access to more money and help the younger generation come along and make more pro service from Ireland and uh, yeah, just grow the sport. You mentioned a little bit earlier there about the fine line between the silver and the gold. Did you catch a bad break with the swell in the end? Uh, no, like I had some good waves and uh, I was super close. Like I needed uh, 6.5 and I got a 6.37. So um, yeah, it's kind of down to personal opinion and human discretion by the like in judging so it was just it was right there the score I needed and uh, I felt like I did pretty well and thought I had the score but uh, yeah it's how it goes sometimes you can't uh, you can't uh, control what everyone else thinks you can't allow for bad taste is what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's the way it all is it's uh, yeah you never know some people prefer one thing some people prefer another so yeah you never know how it's going to go but I felt I was pretty happy with how I served in the final and had good scores and yeah, I was I was happy. You mentioned the Olympics there, Grode. Is that the hope, the dream for 2024? Yeah, exactly. So that's kind of my main goal now for the next year is uh, get into my training and the next qualifier for that is in Puerto Rico in February. So that's our main goal is to try and qualify for the Olympics for next year. It's, uh, it's in Tahiti. Uh, so... It's on a really good wave and a wave that I'd love to be able to go surf. So that's that's a huge goal of mine right now, yeah. Is there a bit of sniffiness from the surf community about the Olympics? Cause there was certainly a time ago. A bit of what? Like that the surf community were not quite bought into the Olympic spirit. Uh, I don't know. It depends. There's like kind of a lot of different sides to surfing. People who like it who just want it to be like the lifestyle thing and all that and they they don't they don't really like competitions and stuff so they might have been like oh we want it to be old school surfing and stuff but i mean 90 most of the people are stoked that it's in the olympics and it's getting more mainstream recognition and it's meaning it's just going to grow the sport everywhere all around the world and just to help the future generations and in, in everything and yeah i think it's amazing and everyone else i know think it's thinks it's amazing but for sure there's definitely some haters out there i'd say what's the so are you like you mentioned about the uh travel nature of things you've mentioned several uh, uh exotic destinations already in the last sort of five or ten minutes what are you do you is sligo then the base that you continue to come back to in between times or how do you manage that yeah, for sure. I, I live in Strandhill in Sligo okay. uh, right now. So every time I come home, there's I'm always hoping for good waves. I mean, there's not really anywhere else in the world that has as good waves as Ireland. Um, so during the summer, I try to travel a lot because it gets kind of small and flat at home. And then kind of come winter, I try and stay home as much as possible to get the winter swells to surf, uh, surf some of the amazing waves we have. I, I've travelled all over the world and I still haven't found anywhere as good as Ireland, to be honest. That's incredible. Yeah. What does a week look like for you, Grode? Obviously, you're, you're out in the water, but what else does a pro surfer do? Do you do gym, is nutrition? Does all of that stuff come into it as well? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the last couple of years, I've started getting a lot more and more into my uh, like physical fitness and nutrition and it definitely is making a big difference. Um, it it's you kind of have to to keep up with the game at the moment everybody else in the world is is really on top of their uh, fitness and stuff so it's definitely everyone's becoming proper athletes now in surfing so it's uh, it's definitely something you have to stay on top of and the national surf center opening up in your doorstep last month does that impact you uh i haven't yeah it's really good it's a super cool building and stuff there so uh hopefully that will help surfing in the in the local community and help grow it and help help us all to uh, improve our surf and with a facility like that there it's great well listen will you jump on with us again down the line when you qualify for the Olympics and you go out there and win a medal yeah. as well <laughs> definitely yeah that's the plan uh, I'll definitely be back on when I qualify for the Olympics and uh, yeah for often to give that a try and if it came off it'd be amazing <laughs> yeah well listen well done uh, yesterday congrats that's an amazing achievement and thanks a million for jumping on this morning Thank you. Thanks so much for having me on. Cheers.